Hey everyone, in this video we will explain the setup of Volcata Studio and the basic control of the robotic arm. We first go to the official website, volcata.com, where we find the download center. Select latest version of the SAP software to download. When the download is complete, we will get a zip file. Unzip this compressed package. Find the Volcata Studio in the zipped file. Double click to open. After opening it, we enter the software interface. Users can select the language in the upper right corner according to need. After we prepare the software, we will now connect the robotic arm. As in the previous video, we connect the extender box and the power supply to the robotic arm. And here we take out the data cable. One end connects to the computer and the other connects to our robotic arm. The data cable can be connected to the extender box or base of the robotic arm. When we need to update the firmware, we need to connect the data cable to the arm. When we need to update the program or download the file for the extender box, we should connect the data cable to the box. Here we choose to connect the data cable to the extender box. After the connection is complete, we turn on power of the arm. On the computer side, we need to find the serial port device of the arm. In my case, it is COM3. If you don't know which device the robotic arm is in, find the device manager, right click this PC, manage to find device manager, find the port, sub serial number, and this is our robotic arm. If it is not recognized, or this is the first time the arm is used, we need to install a driver for the arm. If we go back to the software, Find the setting. Just click install the driver in the setting. Confirm in device manager. Then we choose COM3 in software and connect it. Once connected, the arm will return an initial message. If we don't see the message, we can press the reset button on the base of the robotic arm. In this way, we can see the correct device information. We can see the version number of the firmware of the current arm. This shows that we have connected the robotic arm successfully. There are several operation interfaces in the software. The current interface is the command control interface. Teaching control, block lead, drawing, Python, G code, extender box parameters and settings. In this tutorial, we will mainly explain the operation and the use of the command control, control interface. In this interface, the left side is an interactive command control interface, and the right side is an interface for direct control of the arm and accessories. We now have the robot arm connected correctly, but if we click on the parameters, we find that the arm cannot move normally. The return message tells us that the robotic arm is in a locked state. Therefore, we need to unlock the robotic arm first, which is the homing operation. When we click this blue homing button, we can see each axis of the robotic arm move in the direction of the limit switch. After the homing operation is complete, the arm will return to an initial state. At this time, we can control the movement of the robotic arm. There are two modes for the movement the arm, which are the joint mode and the cord mode. First of all, let's take a look at the joint mode. In this mode, we can control the rotation degree of each joint, from joint 1 to joint 6. The first joint is at the bottom of the robotic arm. 
at the position of the shoulder. If we click this button, you can see it is turning. As we click, this value will change. This number is the angle degree. The change value each time is determined by the number of steps. We can choose 15 to make it change a little bit more. Joint 1 is at the position of the shoulder. Joint 2 is the upper arm. Joint 3 is at the position of the lower arm. Joint 4 is at the position of the wrist. Joint 5 is the hand. As we can see, the small motor in the front is swinging back and forth. Joint 6 is the axial rotation of the small motor. You may not be able to see its rotation clearly. If you can choose to take out a pen holder, use a small hex wrench to install it. We align it to the end of the motor, then use a hex wrench to tighten the screw. There are two screws on the flange, and we tighten each one of them. After installation, we can manually turn it, turn it forward because the sixth axis has no sensor. Now, when we click on the joint six movement, we can see the rotation of the end. After we turn it to a position, if you want to return to the initial position, you can click zero pause, which is the yellow one above, and it will be restored to the position after reset. In addition to directly clicking buttons, we can also control the movement through the keyboard using a shortcut key. If you press number one, we can see that the first axis turns in the positive direction. Press number two, the second axis moves in the positive direction. And the numbers one to six, correspond to the positive direction of the six axes, respectively. If you want to go in the opposite direction, press and hold the ALT key while pressing the number key to make it move in the negative direction. This is the control of the angle of each axis of the robotic arm. Next, let's talk about the coordinate control mode. In the cord mode, first of all, the robotic arm has its own base coordinate system. In the origin of the base coordinate is the center point of the arm base. The entire robot arm stretching in the X direction. We can use the right hand rule to determine the position of the X, Y, Z axes. This is its base coordinate. Here, X, Y, Z and R, X, R, Y, R, Z control the spatial position of the tool coordinate relative to the base coordinate. Let's click X plus. We can see the end moves in the positive direction and X minus moves it in the negative direction. We can increase the step size with the positive direction of y, y plus, and the negative direction y minus. C plus, Z minus, Rx plus, Rx minus. Ry plus, Ry minus. The deflection is relative to the center point of the flange. The center point of the flange is the origin of the tool coordinate. Rz plus, Rz minus. Again, we click zero pause to restore to the initial position. So, if we are in the chord mode and we keep moving in a certain direction, for example x plus, it will eventually exceed its workspace. We can see a return message in the command interface. In this situation, we just need to go back in the opposite direction. If you forget what direction it should move at this time, we can directly click zero pause to return to the original state. Overall, this is the simple motion control of the robotic arm. During normal use, 
You can put an item within its working space, then practice controlling the arm to touch the object to get familiar with the use of our software and robotic arm. or use the joint mode. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.